Hello everyone, it's Matt and welcome to Collaboration Coach. In this video, we're gonna have another look at Microsoft Whiteboard. I did a review of Whiteboard back in December 2018 when it came out of preview and I've been using it ever since and I'm a big fan. It's had a few changes and additions made to it recently. So I thought I'd revisit the app and give you a review of what's changed and why it's useful. I'm not gonna cover off all the things I talked about last time I reviewed Whiteboard because a lot of that stuff has stayed the same. All the sort of core and key functions and features are the same. I'm only gonna cover what's new. So if you wanna watch that last video, then hit the link in the top right hand corner now. And I'll also put a link to that video in the description. So these are the things we're gonna be looking at. First of all, it's the background formatting. So how to change the background look and feel. We're gonna look at object snapping, how to snap objects together, adding text, which we couldn't do before, uh, toolbar docking so we can move the toolbar around we can now export as an SVG we can check for accessibility and most exciting of all we can do integration with Microsoft Teams so first of all let's have a look at the background formatting so when you first open any whiteboard it's usually white you can go to the menu at the top here with a little hamburger button which drops down and you'll see there's a format background option now so I can change the color of my background and I can also change a grid. So if I want a grid, I can change it to that. And then when I draw, I can zoom in and it will zoom in on the grid as well. So it gives me a kind of guide I can use to draw cleaner shapes. Next, we've got object snapping. So when we create an object like this, I've got a square that's snapped into a shape. Um, we can snap objects to that object. So if I was to, to copy this, and select it and move it around. You see you've got these blue lines cutting across and it's actually snapping into position. If I do another paste, get another version of that square, notice that snaps as well. So you can get a nice neat line of squares. Now snapping is something that you can turn on and off. So you'll see here in the, the settings menu, you've got this object snapping toggle. So we can switch that on and off as we like. Next is adding text. So on the plus button in the toolbar at the bottom here, you'll notice we've got a text option now. And on the iPad, which is what I'm using now, we can type the text. And when we're done, we just hit done and it will paste that text into our pad and we can move it around, we can spin it around and so on, resize it and do what we like with it. The toolbar itself can also be moved now, if I go to the hamburger again at the top and you'll notice there's a toolbar location option now and I can choose either the left, the right or the bottom. So right now it's on the bottom. I just choose left. It's going to throw it up there on the left hand side. Next thing I wanted to show you was the ability to export as an SVG. So an SVG file is a vector graphics file that can be easily resized and also is usually of a smaller size than a JPEG or a PNG. So the way you export with a whiteboard is come to the hamburger button, choose export, and then you get the option of the PNG and then the SVG. So if you export as SVG, it asks you where you'd like to save it. And then that's saved as a, as a file, which you can then move around and distribute. But if you wanted to import that into something like PowerPoint, you can insert as a picture and choose the file you exported and then bring it in. So PowerPoint supports SVGs. And because it's so scalable, you can make it any size and it will keep its quality. So this might be good for slide decks or Word documents where you want to resize the image and keep the quality. So next thing I wanted to show you was the accessibility checker. And basically what this does is looks at all the objects in your whiteboard and tells you how they could be made more accessible. So you get to the accessibility checker by going to the hamburger button in the top right and choosing accessibility checker. When you do that, it takes you to a call out on the right hand side that shows you all the objects 
in your whiteboard canvas that haven't been made accessible. So for example, if I click on this square, it tells me that I should add a description of the content for a screen reader. And because that doesn't have any alternative text at the moment, a screen reader wouldn't be able to identify what that object was. So all I'd have to do is add a very descriptive text. So say, this is a black square. So now when I take that back, it shows me that square has been changed and now it's accessible. The whiteboard integration with Teams comes through the Teams meetings. Now you can open up whiteboard during a meeting and share it with everybody who's attending. To share a whiteboard, you just need to join the meeting and then you use the share button here. And now in the share dialogue, you'll see the whiteboard on the right hand side here. So you press the whiteboard and it will open up a new whiteboard canvas for you. So once the whiteboard canvas is loaded, you'll see if other people have put images or made changes to the whiteboard, you'll see them here. In Teams, you can switch to a pen toolbar. So you can bring up a pen, you can change the color and you can do erasing. So if you wanted to say highlight a certain part of the part of the whiteboard, you can do that. You don't have things like ink to table or ink to shape within Teams. It's quite basic. So all you can really do is do pens and then erase pen as well. And then you can also uh, switch back to the other toolbar and create sharing links. So this sharing link is a link to the whiteboard that you can share through something like chat. So if you went to a chat window and you went to the conversation, you could just paste in the link to the whiteboard and share that with somebody so they could come and actually contribute with you on it. So back in the meeting, the last thing I wanted to show you is that when you're done with the sharing, you can hit the stop presenting button. And then when you're done with the meeting, you can hang up. Now, because you did the whiteboard session in a meeting, it means you've got a constant record of that. So if you go to your chat section in Teams, and you go to the meeting that you were just attending, you'll see you've got the conversation from the meeting, files, meeting notes, and so on, but you've also got this whiteboard tab. So the whiteboard tab keeps a permanent record of the whiteboard that you captured during the meeting. And you can also add to it afterwards as well. So you can make changes to it afterwards and keep on collaborating outside of the meeting if you want to. Okay, so that's your tour of Microsoft Whiteboard. I hope this was useful. If you like this video, then please subscribe and let us know how you're using Whiteboard in the comments.